So um, this tutorial is uh, with Antonia is actually in, in two parts and it's probably too small for the back. Can you tell me in the back if it's readable? Perfect, thanks. So the first part is you can actually do manual um, hyperparameter tuning, or at least also see that with default hyperparameter, you can swap everything. And in the second part, uh, we will actually do automatic hyperparameter tuning and, and write the small part that's missing. So of course, um, as always, we install the different dependencies. So stable base S3, the contrib, and Optuna, and we import the different algorithm we would like to use. Um, here, we will first again try to solve the pendulum environment, but this time with default hyperparameter. Um, one trick here is that we are using a very small budget, so only 4,000 steps, and we will be using PPO. So if we use PPO and we train for that small budget, it, it will not work. So the, after this budget, uh, the reward, mini-visitic reward will be around minus 1,000, which is far from solving this pandemic environment. Yeah, so as you can see. Um, then you may think maybe I should change algorithm. So we can also try with A2C. So we are just going to copy paste the line from PPU. And because it follows the same interface, we can very quickly um, train with another algorithm. And the same goes for the evaluation. We just reuse the code we had for PPU. And we just uh, launch everything. But spoiler alert, this will still not solve um, the pendulum. So it will still be far from, from solving it. Um, actually, changing the algorithm to an off policy algorithm would uh, help a lot. But in that case, here we would like to solve it with on policy with A to C or PPU. So, one solution that actually works most of the time is to increase the training budget. So, here we have a very small budget that we give to the agent, so 4,000 steps. And we could choose to just increase it. Um, we, we give 10 times the budget, so um, 40,000 uh, steps. But again, here, this is not enough. So at that moment, once you have realized that giving more budget is not enough, it's time to go towards tuning hyperparameters. And um, I will not make you tune it by hand, at least not this time. Um, but if you look at in the zoo, I've already um, provided uh, tuned hyperparameters. And if we use those with, uh, again, the same budget, then we can actually solve uh, the pendulum. And here, the, so the solution to our problem was actually tuning the hyperparameter. Um, and what you can see also is this problem, the pendulum is a toy task. So if it fails on a toy task, you may imagine that on a more complex task, uh, you really need to, to be sure that you have two hyperparameters. So let's see. Uh, yeah. So let's see with when we train longer, it's still it's still pretty random, so around minus one thousand. But the good news is normally, yeah, we train with two hyperparameters, then we will be able to to reach good outcomes. While it's training, is there any question so far? Not in the chat. Good. Because the second thing uh, I would like you to do is what I call grad student descent, is you will be the algorithm. You will be the one sampling and pruning. And for that, the goal for you is to optimize the hyperparameter of A to C on the carpool environment. So the carpool environment you've seen this morning is just a cart with a board on it. And the maximum episodic reward that you can achieve is 500 because the maximum episode, uh, steps per episode is uh, 500, and you get one uh, per step where you still alive. The tricky part here is that we will give a small budget uh, to the algorithm, so only 20,000 steps. And if you use default hyperparameters, it will still be far from random. So random policy will be uh, around 20 in terms of robots, so it can balance randomly during 20 steps and then fall down. But if you use actually uh, the default hyperparameters, uh, you will see that it's, it's not random, it, but it's far from the optimal performance. So the goal for you 
will be to tune uh, the parameters of A to C. So we just wait for A to C to finish training. So we have with the training, you see that the episodic mean reward is now around uh, 120. So it's actually learning something, but because we give a very small budget, it's not able to reach maximum performance. Here we go. So the goal for you would be to actually improve on that and to reach the maximum performance. One thing that you may have seen is that here, I use a seed, a random seed, because I wanted actually to, to have the same results again and again. And you may fix the seed for, for you, but the goal for you would be actually to have hyperparameters that works not only for one random seed, but for many. Uh, and you will see that actually you may find hyperparameters that work for a trial, but if you try them again, then you don't get um, the same performance. And my battery is running low, so I need to. Okay, back. Um, okay, so what do you have to tune? So um, you have to tune the network architecture. So here we have a two layer network for the value function and the actor function. You can tune the activation function. So using a redo or tangent, uh, hyperbolic tangent. You can tune the learning rate, uh, the discount factor. So do you want to privilege immediate reward or long-term uh, reward? You can tune uh, the maximum value for gradient flipping. You can tune also the entropy coefficient, which will favor um, exploration if you give a higher value. And you can choose also the number of steps that you use to collect an estimated gradient. Um, so the idea for you is to run those cells, to change the values, and evaluate it uh, afterward here. And uh, the goal for you is actually to um, to reach a performance of 500, but for more more uh, randomness. And uh, because I will give you the same uh, input as for my algorithm. Here are the recommended range for the different uh, parameters. And uh, of course, you will not be alone. You will be competing against the script, automated uh, upper parameter tuning. And we'll see who is best. So we just need to. So the script is actually what you're going to put right afterward. It's automatic upper parameter tuning. And the goal for you is to be faster than this one to find optimal hyper parameters. And you will have, again, uh, 10 minutes. So time for you to tune. And here is the first trial you know, of the algorithm that already finished with uh, 76 as a final performance. And once you have found uh, actually uh, good hyperparameters, please share them on Discord or raise your hand in the audience and we can actually check. I guess we have a bit of time now. Uh, I, was, I was thinking, uh, can you choose like number of processes that you're searching? Exactly. So, by, by default, because it's Python, you, you cannot, you could use multi threading, but it's pretty valid because Python has uh, a lock which prevents you from doing multi threading. But what you can do with Optuna is have multi process or multiple nodes that connect to a database and uh, then have distributed optimization. And here already the third trial has reached uh, 500. And this is random sampling because as you have seen, I've, I've set up to. Uh, did you set the seed? No, I didn't set the seed. Actually, for this, I didn't set the seed. 
But the thing is, what you're going to see is soon it will start to prune and it will uh, start getting trial more and more closer to 500. But this is only valid for one seed. Maybe it's not valid for others. Yeah. Yeah, but the thing is, the more trial it will try, the, the more accurate the surrogate model will be. And so it will sample trial uh, parameters that are um, close to that are usually giving good performance. And here you, you see already that after the fifth trial, it starts pruning. So it starts um, not giving the full budget to all trials. But you, you can still go on. Uh, the... But yeah, it's a bit cheated if random something is solving it. <laughs> Now just blindly filling in numbers. How many trials? How many trials? What? How many trials? I think I set it to one hundred, but I will stop it before. Is there something like to to add uh, meta learning? What do you mean by adding meta learning? So what you said about. Uh, Often when you change the size of your neural network, you might want to lower the neural network, the learning rate, or I don't know what, and they are often correlated. So suppose you have the zoo, right? With all the optimized parameters, this, this could come out of that, that you that there is this, this 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 connection. So meta learning is basically, yeah, you so, give a prior to it. Okay, so I wouldn't call it meta learning, but of course the thing is you can have a sampler which learn correlate correlation between hyperparameters. Or which learn uh, how do you if you sample I don't know batch size higher batch size then you you should have a higher learning rate and I, I wouldn't call it meta learning but I would call it learning correlation or learning uh, yeah correlation between the variables. Okay, so we'll try that five hundred. Yes. Four hundred. Nice. And if you change the seat, did you still get the four hundred ninety three? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so the main point uh, of this exercise right now is to show you that you should actually use hyperparameter tuning when you can and to show you also that evaluation in RL is quite noisy even though you could tune it manually yes a question over there I have a general question based on experience uh, so you know, I mean, there is any problem you, you want to do hyperparameter tuning for it. Uh, you wonder if you go to the real problem, often simulators actually take a long time to, to do anything other than the game of simulators. So um, you know, the feedback rate is not fast enough to accumulate enough experience to, to actually tune anything. So, but, but if you keep the dimensionality the same, Meaning the dimensionality of the action space, everything else is like, but create a fake problem with a fake reward. So you have the same topology, dimensional topology. Do you think the hyperparameter, when it is tuned for that kind of problem, is still going to be useful when we go to the actual problem where the simulator takes a lot longer? So, so the question is a bit about can we transfer hyperparameters from one task to another? Or it's, it's tuning tuning for a, a task. Not, uh, it, it's the same task structure. But with a different simulator or with the... With, with, a, with a simplified simulator mm -hmm. or with a simplified reward with the target that is easy. You, know, you, can, you can do a distance measure, which is much easier than any real simulation that would give you a proper reward. Um, but it's still a reward. It's a valid reward. It's a valid target. And you can use it as a test case. The topology is the same. Mm -hmm. So my question is, I mean, uh, this is what I do usually because I have no other choice. And I'm wondering if you think it's a valid it. So far, in case of RL, it, it it would usually work. I mean, there's no guarantee, obviously. But um, yeah, tuning on a similar um, on on the same task with a different sim would would yeah. The, the good news is usually when you find tune hyperparameters, they work for many problems. And when I 
same problems. It would be the same task but different uh, simulation. Um, so it's usually the case with the more modern algorithm, but obviously there's no guarantee. Um, maybe do we have 500 in the room or online on Discord? There's someone there in the back, guys. Did you work for multiple seed? Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. What, what that 400 is that So the second uh, seed was still at 400? Yeah. Okay, that's very nice. Maybe I can take a look. Also, someone there in the chat with 500. Okay, um, maybe, so maybe if you found one on Discord, maybe share also you have the parameters. Okay, perfect. And do you know what's, what was changed? So, from, um, on my right, what was changed is um, the smaller uh, discount factor. So, you, you will actually try to um, optimize a more immediate reward, which usually make the learning faster, but usually you will end up in the local minimum. And also uh, the uh, exploration factor was uh, increased. This is a question. Yeah, I was wondering, maybe for example, for the learning rate, you could annul it. So mm -hmm. I was wondering if you could just, like for example, the exploration rate as well, if you could annul it some parameters. Exactly. And just explore among those. Is it, is it possible on the, on the current implementation? So um, what you would do is actually choose um, le the learning rate scheduler or learning or exploration uh, rate scheduler, um, first be it linear or be it constant. And by default, in fact, the exploration, uh, your exploration will be adapted with some gradient uh, update. Uh, so yeah, you, you can do it. It's not done by Optonite, it's mostly done from the state of business three side. So first to have different type of learning rate, which is not constant, and linearly uh, decreasing, you can have that also directly. Could you, could you show uh, where on the, so it, you have it on the notebook? Just and not in the notebook, but in, the, in our documentation, in fact, uh, this is three, if you go to our examples, Good examples, you have a linear uh, learning rate schedule, and here you just, in fact, as uh, bigger, what you do is you pass a function instead of a constant value, you pass the function to the constructor, and that's how you can uh, have a different learning rate. For the entropy coefficient, you will need to have actually a callback to do that or a custom version. Um, Yeah, there's another question. Where do you change the seed? So you change the seed in um, in the constructor here. So where you you would pass the hyperparameters and you change the seed just here. Um, okay. So maybe in the room, the one got five hundred or ah no. Why <laughs> shadow? In the chat, he has uh, five hundred for. Uh, Nice. What, what is the hyperparameter? What, what was changed? Oh, no, the other one is. Oh. So the hyperparameters are number of steps, right? Learning rate 7 to uh, 10, 7 times 10 to minus 4, gamma is 0 0.99, and x squared minus 1, and x coefficient is 0 0.01. This one. Uh, okay. So here, what we see is that this. A higher uh, gradient clipping, so you will allow your agent to change more quickly. There's, uh, it enforces a bit more exploration, and I think the learning rate is a bit higher. But uh, oh, sorry, go, go up. If you go up, uh, those are the correct parameters. So, up uh, here. Uh, so yeah, so the um, yeah, so the discount factor is smaller, which will favor um, immediate reward. You will have. You, you have higher gradient keeping, so it will change the, uh, the model more quickly, but that may lead to unstable. And the number of steps is higher, which should allow actually to have um, uh, more uh, less noisy gradient uh, 
estimates. Nice. So, and if we stop here for our talk to now, we'd actually have some nice plots. So here you have the different trials that we tried, and here all the dots here are average maximum performance. And it also gives actually um, a different uh, the parameter importance uh, that we have at least for that run. And we see here that the gradient norm is actually quite uh, quite important. Is sensitivity? Yeah, it, it means that it impacts the performance the most. The thing is, here it's it's not true for every run. If you want it to be uh, true for this task, you will need to actually uh, run it with many more trials. But at least for this set of runs, for those, uh, I think, 50 trials that we have done, in, that's it done automatically, then this was the most in impactful um, uh, parameter. Okay. And so the last part is actually writing the script that I just used. And for that, we will uh, import the different sampler and pruner from Otuna. We have a configuration, which is the maximum number of trials that we want to use, uh, and the different configuration for the minimum budget that we allocate per trial, uh, the environment that we want to use, and some default hyperparameters. So here, the default hyperparameters is just the policy we want to use and the environment, but we could have other default hyperparameters. We, uh, we will also um, evaluate the agent using 10 uh, evaluation episodes. And, uh, and the maximum budget is, again, here, 20,000 steps. So the first exercise for you is to finish defining the search space. So um, I've started defining the search space for this configurator for the gradient norm and for the next uh, number of steps. But you need now to define it for the learning rates for the network architecture and for the activation function. So you can obviously take a look at Optuna documentation if you don't know how to do that or at the slides that I have presented before. Um, and the goal for you in the next five minutes is to complete this uh, sampling method. And next, what we are going to do is actually uh, write the full objective function. So is it clear? Or should I uh, repeat or to define? So how do you how do you uh, sample the um, the learning rates? You will, we can just reuse what's uh, above. Here we can define a key, so we can define any key. In fact, that will be the key used by Optuna. Uh, and the range is one is to minus over minus five to one using a uh, Log distribution. And uh, for uh, the two others, it's actually categorical sampling. So we just have uh, the network architecture here. And we choose from uh, either a tiny network or a small one, which are defined below. So basically, a two layer network or just a one layer network. And it's categorical here. Categorical. And the activation function again is the same. You we choose from the list, and the list is uh, hyperbolic tangent or uh, radio. And those are defined actually just uh, below here. The reason we use string is because we want to save those in the, into a database. And if we were using PyTorch objects, it would be with the destroy error. Uh, see. It should be activation function. Thanks. Maybe I will, I will keep it a bit more. Okay, and um, then we have the callback, which will allow us to do the intermediate evaluation. And this is exactly what I've, I've shown before. So actually, the evaluate policy is done by the parent class, which is the evaluate callback. And we report the performance to Optina. And if um, we should prune, then we can return false. And so we stop the training early. And uh, the final exercise is actually, uh, but I don't know how many people are still here at the computer because I may just fill it uh, the gap. Because 
Yeah. So uh, the final exercise would have been to actually write the objective function. So putting all the pieces together, where uh, we first sample the default hyperparameters. Then we want to sample uh, hyperparameters and update um, and update the keyboard arguments. So what we do is we just call update, and the parameter we want to sample is actually from uh, the function we define above, sample A to C parameters, and it takes as input a trial. Then we would instantiate the model using uh, the updated hyperparameters. Next things we want to we need to do is create evaluation environment, and here we just use a make and function, make back and function, which should take as input the environment idea, ID, and the number of evaluation environment that we want to use. Um, so this will create multiple environment for evaluation, and finally we need to instantiate our callback. Um, and I've given actually the, so the callback we define just above, and this is the signature uh, of it. So we need to pass uh, the evaluation environment first, then the trial from Optuna, then the number of episodes we want to evaluate. How often do we, do we want to evaluate everything? Uh, <coughs> Uh, if we want to use deterministic evaluation or not, and if you want to uh, have some more output. And let's say we want to use deterministic evaluation. Uh, let me zoom out actually. So basically, first thing is sampling the hyperparameter. Next thing is creating the evaluation environment. And finally, the, you create uh, the callback. And once you have done that, then you pass, you call done method with the maximum budget, you pass the callback, and, uh, and then you will return the final evaluation if it's not pruned. And the rest is choosing the sampler, choosing the pruner, and launching uh, the study. This is what I'm going to do. So it's actually it starts, okay, it starts, and then I can go back to where we are. Um, so now we have a 10 minutes break and we will do the final collab where you can actually uh, run, um, learn to train a quadruped to, to turn in five minutes. And I will just let it run uh, so you can actually also try it by yourself. So we're coming back at 55, uh, 50, 10 minutes? 60? At, at, uh, at four. Yeah, I'm going to call that. 